previously on Balls. We know it's um, not the kind of thing we want to see happening um, when we have our visitors from other parts of Africa and the world coming to uh, coming to visit our, our shores and, and play against Bafana. Look, I think uh, somehow very unfortunate that uh, such an incident had to happen. But at the same time, I think uh, we could be, uh, you know, uh, blowing this thing a bit out of proportion. Um, uh, these are youth, uh, probably aged between 11 and 13. What? Uh, one 11 and 13? Yes. Oh, my goodness. One, one young boy threw a stone and he hit the bus. Of course, it's an incident because people were inside. Yeah. One stone, and it goes out there as if you know, there was uh, stone throwings everywhere. It wasn't the case. The police apprehended those youngsters, and of course uh, they are minors, as you know. You uh. can't even get to know their names, and mm. of course uh, they had to take them to their parents because they have to be under parental supervision. We understand one of them has been taken to a uh, place of safety. I mean. It probably doesn't have a place to stay. That those are some of the things. But I must say, very unfortunate. And mm. fortunate enough, this incident happened just about probably uh, 10, 15 meters away from where I was driving. But the bus was ahead of me. Yeah. Uh, uh, in the convoy, and when they suddenly stopped, they caused some traffic jam. I decided, let me uh, use the right hand because it's clean. Yeah. Check what is happening. Why did the bus stop? Is there an accident? Yeah only to realize that the bus, the bus driver was outside who said to me, look, somebody threw a stone and uh, it smashed the window. And I went inside the bus, uh, spoke to the coach of Zambia and walked through to see who was uh, the player involved. It was indeed uh, Kennedy Miene. And uh, uh, he was at a state of shock, uh, no cut whatsoever. And, and you know, this is a shutterproof uh, 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 window. So nothing can, could go through. But of course, shutterproof would always, you know, begin to crumble, yeah. and, and that's what actually happened. And I spoke to him and, and probably the team doctor, and they said, well, he said, in a state of shock. Mm. And this morning, I further on spoke to the uh, president of the federation, of course, apologizing on behalf of uh, the association, the nation of what happened. Look, these are incidents that we cannot just take for granted, but surely uh, knowing that we'll be hosting such a major uh, activity come uh, 2013, we have to ensure that uh, perhaps a legal education is needed. We yeah. must tell the youth that uh, it's irresponsible to think like you, you're throwing a stone to a bed when you're throwing to a bus. Mm. Suddenly something will happen. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, like I said, it went out as if indeed there was a, a mob uh, stoning the bus. That wasn't the case. All right, yeah. And look, I mean, that's how, you know, sound bites and little pieces of information that get used in headlines get taken out of proportion. And, and sometimes that's what, uh, that's what people around the world, that's all they see. And you say it gets interpreted as, uh, um, as you say, a, uh, a mob or, or, you know, violence at a football game again. No, 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 no. It was outside. If you have been at FNB, when you drive out from the VIP side and press side, when you get to the circle, right to the circle there, yeah. that's where it happened. So, so we don't even know if, if the, this youth was um, had watched the game, was at the game, or... That's it. We don't even... Look, I can't even tell whether they really did watch the game, or yeah. whether they are youth who camp around there, you know. Mm. Uh, but at least it said something to us. Uh, never take anything for granted. Uh, we need to ensure that that area is clean all the time. Yeah. Uh, because uh, we are fortunate that the incident happened the way it happened and of course the police managed to apprehend those youth if they didn't we'll be sitting, sitting with questions yeah you know at uh, least we know what type of youth you're talking about they probably need a bit of rehab and uh, uh, a bit of education to understand that it, it is irresponsible to do that absolutely now you you said you did speak to the zambian federation uh, today uh, how are they are they obviously they've they've got your full explanation exactly what happened are they accepting there's not going to be any further uh, sanction or, or request for sanction or anything from their side? Have they accepted it and uh, understand the situation? I must confirm that uh, when I spoke to the president of the Zambian Football Association, Mr. Kalusha Piala, mm -hmm. he was very clear to say, look, uh, we accepted what has happened and uh, we accept your apology and it's unfortunate that such an incident had to happen the way it happened. Mm -hmm. uh, clearly, it's, it's just one of those 
uh, uh, you know, a crazy young boy decide to say, let me try if I can throw this far, <laughs> and ended up in the bus. Yeah. But All right. We really condemn such behavior. Unfortunately, it, it happened to their bus. It yeah. could have happened to, I don't know, any anybody. other car or yeah. whatever, anybody. But but it happened to a bus, and as a result, because it's, 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 it's our guest to who had arrived here, it would appear like they were targeted. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, but again, um, it, it taught us something, never take anything for granted. Yes. Uh, Kirsten, the, the incident itself disappointing. What I also thought was quite disappointing was the turnout last night for that game. Oh, yes. Uh, that, that, was, that was a major disappointment for us too. And I think uh, from our side, uh, I think our organization having moved the game from PE this end, how it happened. Obviously, our administration still has to give us an account as to how we had such a turnout and, and for such a very, very important activity, honoring uh, an icon of the yeah. world in such a way was, was really disappointing from our side. What, what does it come I in? How much does it cost again? What's the final game now uh, for, for your general, general seat in, in a stadium like the F&B Stadium? Good question. Um, I, I have to inquire. I, cause I th- I'm thinking, is, is it a case of affordability in, in these tough economic times where people have to pick and choose, you know, where and, and how much football they're going to watch? Obviously, we have AFCON coming up soon as well. So people are kind of, you know, looking at, at what's what's coming up and saying, well, and, and I think we know as well within you know, South African soccer, it's still such a massive, massive um, following for, for teams like Chiefs and Pirates where, you know, sometimes I know, I know there was a problem. I don't know if it still is. Where you know, it, it was a case of people would rather go and watch their team, like Chiefs or Pirates or Sundowns, than go and watch Bafana. I don't know if that attitude is changing. Where you know, people are also now all getting behind and saying we want to go and, and support our team. Clearly, there must be something happening. Where, as I say, we only get sixteen thousand people going to a game, which is traditionally such a big game on our soccer calendar. I must say, yes, uh, a mixture of uh, factors here. Mm. Uh, the economies cannot be ruled out, a midweek uh, effect, uh, and of course, transportation system, and uh, another factor. It means yeah. only those that are mobile would make it to the stadium. Mm. Uh, the stadium is not completely accessible on foot uh, in terms of uh, people around Soweto. And of course, uh, uh, of course, midweek uh, becomes a, 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 a big issue in terms of. Uh, uh, again, uh, month end, uh, you're talking about the 14th. That's mm. really yeah. deep. Right in the middle. Well. Yeah. In the middle. And of course, uh, uh, our side, did we market the game enough? Because I still remember people were still talking about, is this game taking place in PE? <laughs> uh, because uh, last year it took place there. And, and I think the mindset shifted that, oh, this is a PE meta. So I think our marketing department didn't do much. Uh, the game was not completely marketed. That's what I observed, and uh, that also tells in terms of the turn up. Of course, the fact that you mentioned, uh, uh, you're talking of uh, Derby coming on the eighth. Yeah. Uh, people would rather reserve the little they have and say, "Why not there?" You mm. know, and 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 those are factors. Yeah. Okay, Knox, final one for Kirsten. Um, Kirsten, I just want to find out um, what suffer standing with regards to stadiums being ready for the game. I'll tell you the reason I'm asking is because, as far as I understand, the players couldn't use the stadium for practice a day before the game, and this is following the Lincoln Park concert. Look, I think uh, that was also another factor that was that didn't go too well with all of us. I mean, uh, uh, we have administration that has to negotiate for the users' facilities, and if they were promised that. Uh, the stadium will be available at certain time, um, and of course, it wasn't available at certain time as expected. Of course, that also was affected, and you could see there was a pitch at the stadium that was not completely playable. Um, it didn't look good, uh, I must say. Um, perhaps uh, the team that went to negotiate the stadium and was told that there will be a concert, however, the stadium was ready, did not foresee that uh, it would have meant denying the team a chance to practice. It would have meant, of course, uh, on the day of the game, the stadium wouldn't still look good because they could have thought of an alternative venue. Uh, Maybe Orlando could have been a far much better uh, um, 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 facility because, again, uh, it's not as big as they are. And, of course, accessibility. I I don't think those factors... Of course, you also had to take the coach's request into account because he wanted to have a feel of the stadium where he's going yeah. to have the first opening game of, of Afcon. Yeah. So those mixed factors uh, had to come in. But uh, uh, I must say, um, it didn't look good, uh, particularly on a facility that is our best facility in the country. 
uh, a national stadium like that one would have uh, uh, projected as more positive, but unfortunately, yeah, uh, the, the stadium management had to make sure that uh, that stadium survive and they had to make it viable and uh, they have to try all options and bringing all those concerts in perhaps make them ensure that the stadium is there and continue to be there. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, we appreciate your uh, your candor and, and your time with us today as well. Uh, clearly in the post-mortem phase after yesterday, a few things that uh, you guys are going to be chatting about and, and dealing with. At least they've been identified. We know what they are and uh, hopefully they can be sorted out in time for the next one. Kirsten, we appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're Kirsten. welcome. Cheers. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye-bye. Here we go. The, uh, the president of SAFA chatting to us uh, today here at uh, Ball Run. This is Ball's Visual Radio. Darren, Simon, Kate and John. Weekdays from 3pm to 6pm Central African Time. Balls.co.za